It's 8 a.m. on a bleak, blustery day in the city of Lancaster. But the weather won't deter 13-year-old Josh. In rain, hail, sleet and snow, he cycles to Skirton Community School. But there is a tasty incentive, a free breakfast. It's helped the planet because it's not polluting coming in cars, so it's healthier to come on our bikes. The Bike It boys represent the new healthy side of Skirton. But only a few years ago, this school appeared to be in terminal decline. The school was in a mess. It was a very difficult place to be. Uh, there were youngsters who were clearly very unhappy. This school was seen as the school for, you know, any kind of miscreants, basically. It was full of drug dealers and whatever. That was the, that was the public's perception of this school. We felt worried for our pupils because they didn't feel safe in the corridors and they just didn't enjoy the business of being at school and they were not learning. You can only imagine what it must have been like at the time amongst the, the bottom schools in the country with national TV at the doorstep when on results day and, the, and just how you know, low the staff and the pupils must have felt. So it surprised no one when in November 2003, the school was put under special measures. The school was sick and the staff adopted the Healthy Schools Initiative, tackling diet, improving fitness, and most importantly, restoring self-esteem and pride. The ethos here is a very caring one and a very supportive one because the children here need nurturing. What do you think? Those children are absolutely desperate for that nurturing. They need to get it here in school, and that's what we're providing them with. This is a social skills ball, and it's about finishing sentences. The nurture group works on a small group setting. We've got about 10 children, and they may suffer from social, emotional, and behavioural difficulties. And they come in here, and we do normal lessons, nine out of the 25 subjects they have in here um, English, maths, PSHE, and history. It's in a more relaxed environment. The breakfast helps them with social skills. They have a chat in the morning, they're more relaxed, and it sets them up for the day. It's like putting petrol in your car, basically fuels them for the day. They may stay in here for anything from one term up to three, four terms, but they never want to leave us when they move on back into mainstream. What you saw in the nurture room, you know, you, you saw a miniature version of what this whole school is about. That nurture permeates through everything that happens in this school and the staff are just out, uh, unbelievable. High praise, and it seems justified when you see how hard the staff work to get the students on side. We mark out and drill for the camshaft. When I first came in, I was told that if you're, if you're an outsider as such, you need to be an insider. And once you're an insider, the, the kids will fight for you. They won't fight you, they'll fight for you. And it's a different relationship. The kind of language I heard a lot when I first came here with the staff was be to call the pupils love and sweetheart and the, you know almost like you would speak to your own children and 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 at first it it sort of was like I say was a bit of a culture shock to me but I think afterwards you realize that this is what these children need you know perhaps they're not getting that anywhere else <laughs> But what they were getting in the canteen was stodgy, fatty food with vending machines full of crisps, chocolate and fizzy drinks. That would all change. Well, most things are now fresh fruit, fresh veg. We do our homemade soups. Now we've got fresh meat from the local butchers. We have a roast once a week. Jacket potatoes with fillings, curries, sweet and sours. They're very uh, conservative, the kids, and you've got to put it on two or three times before the school. Well, what happened to so and so? You know, what happened to the sweet and sour? Why aren't we having it on anymore? And you wouldn't think they would have taken to it. Once they've tried it about three times, they will take to it. We don't have any fizzy drinks now, no crisps, 
We have no chocolate. <laughs> I just finished it completely and that was it. Certainly we, we know that several of our children react adversely to things like crisps and coke and, and various other um, additive types of food. And because of the reaction that we've eliminated, the behaviour has improved in the classroom. I expected them to be up in arms, but we said no, there's no, none of them. OK, that was it. It's nice, but on a Thursday we get fish and chips. It's changed because they do a lot more vegetarian <laughs> stuff for vegetarians as well. It's good that they've got rid of their junk food and brought healthy food. Instead of like chips and burgers and stuff like that. I always leave a clean plate. <laughs> Danny has a few problems when he has crisps in the morning. Uh, what does it do you? Do, do you? Makes me go mad. Makes you go mad. What was the word you used earlier? Loopy. Loopy. That's probably a good way of describing it. And if he doesn't have his crisps in the morning, then he's fine. Everyone really. Giving pupils a voice in the running of their school has been a fundamental part of Skirton becoming healthy. They operate a lead learners scheme, peer mentoring in the classroom, and the pupils themselves are drawing up a new anti-bullying policy. My suggestion is we have a safe zone round here, yeah. and you have a teacher here near the toilet. Right. I wanted the policy, the, the, the anti-bullying charter, as we're going to call it, to come from them. I wanted the ideas to come from them. And um, the pupils just came up. I mean, they're quite intolerant, actually. What are you going to do if you see this bullying taking place? What are you going to do, Daniel? I think we should hang John Quorum. OK, well, even with your liberal views, what about you, Brian? What do you think? Well, we've got the stage system in it where you've got, like, first stage, second stage, so it's just, like, three chances and then they phone the police, but if you just snip it in the bud straight away as soon as it happens, then it won't happen again, will it? Certain areas of the school that pupils consider to be areas where they're more likely to get bullied than others, they came up with this idea of this safe zone that uh, pupils who were feeling vulnerable or bullied or whatever could go and there would always be somebody there. Bullying is a big issue for even the youngest of children and again it's a mixed picture that I see. Uh, a large number of schools are doing fantastic things with bullying, particularly by involving children and people through schools councils, uh, by listening to what children themselves have got to say about the experience of bullying. I want all schools uh, to be really on the ball in terms of stamping out the scourge of childhood today, uh, which is bullying. At Skirton, physical fitness took a dive when they were put under special measures. That's now improving. But what do you do with teenage girls who are reluctant to keep fit? Well, what looks like a prayer meeting is in fact a classroom workout called Just Ten, because it lasts for just ten minutes. We're going to start with stepping out, stepping in. So after me, out, out, in, in. One of the big problems is they don't actually like sometimes the PE tutor. Another time is they don't actually like changing in front of other girls because they're, they're developing and they've got to that age in their life where they want to hide everything rather than show it off. Uh, and another one is the fact that they don't like... It's like peer pressure. They, don't, they feel they're going to show themselves up doing exercise and stuff in front of other girls. They haven't got the confidence, a lot of the girls. And this way, it's sort of... You do it with only a small group and hopefully it brings up their confidence and so that they can, in the end, access PE again. It's not just physical fitness they care about. A specialised team identify pupils with emotional and personal problems and offer counselling like this. It's about picking the kids up early um, and being able to work with them before it gets to crisis point. So we may very well be able to deal with them in school and work with them inside of school with our agencies that come in and work with us on a, on a weekly basis, which we might be CAMS counselling, it might be the school nurse, um, it might just be um, having time out of class to work with a mentor, to talk through problems, to help them deal with what, what's going on in their lives. In terms of emotional health, this is often overlooked, but we know from our work with young people in particular uh, how big the burden is of having an emotional difficulty. And remember, one in ten young people has got a diagnosable mental health problem. Talk to Daniel, you can explain to him how upset you are. At Skirton, they've created something called Hoistar Mast, 
a multi-agency support team who call on outside help, like the police, when needed. One option that we do have in school is our community police officer who would be able to um, come around and sit down with your mum, you, and just be able to talk through this so that all your families feel like it's been resolved properly. It's the end of the school day and Josh is back on his bike and he could soon be joined by many others because Skirton hopes to be the first school in the country to provide free bikes for all their students. The reality for some of our pupils is that they would never have a bike. So we're going to buy some bikes, uh, we're going to train the children how to ride those bikes safely, how to look after the bikes. Um, we'll also provide them with the protective clothing and that bike will be loaned to them to come to school till basically they grow out of it. Back at school it's getting busy in the kitchen where a weekly cook and eat club is underway. It's good wholesome food like fish pie, shepherd's pie, ordinary everyday food, but made not from a tin. <laughs> so we're doing, well we have been doing what the government wants us to do from next year. We've been doing it for a while. Blue team. The surprising thing about this after school club is that most of the girls here don't attend classes. They're drawn from Lancaster's large traveller family community who traditionally have little to do with secondary education. They have a lot of skills. They cook at home. They cook with their grandmother and very well behaved. <laughs> there is no problem, no discipline problems with these girls. Yeah. Cheesecake. Oh, lovely. Try it. Never try. It's beautiful. Mm. It's lovely. Never yeah. said that. Looks very nice and it tastes lovely. Don't it, Alfred? It's very good and I think that they should learn mm. to cook because there's a lot of young people today can't cook. Mm. They don't know how to cook. Also, it learns them to mix with other people in um. you know, their own age group as well. It took three long, hard years to lift Skirton out of special measures. A school synonymous with failure, now truly healthy. And its academic reputation that once glowed in the 1950s, now well on its way to being restored. If you'd come to this school in the 1950s, this was, you know, second school. You go around Lancaster, you meet so many people who went to Skirton, who have small businesses, who remember this school with great affection people you will say to you this is a good school getting better it is we've just had the best results we've ever had our attendance is improving the pupil behavior is improving we've changed a school to become something that this this area absolutely desperately needs it's a community school it's a school that provides for, for children that are not being provided for elsewhere we've got results from them that, that make your hair stand on end skirton's got a good fighting spirit and we're on the up and we'll keep fighting.